time can be a very overwhelming concept to grasp. It's constantly continuing with no possible way to stop it. And to me, the scariest idea of all is that everyone is only on this planet for a certain amount of it. We're born, we live our life, and we all eventually die. And for most of us, we strive to lead an exciting life. We strive to be successful in every aspect of the word. We hope to make a lot of friends, gain a lot of money, and lead a nice life with minimum stress. And it's true that money can buy things like cars and houses and vacations. That's a fact. But it can't buy time. And what you do with that time is absolutely priceless. As we go on throughout our life, however, the one thing that often gets forgotten along the way is building your legacy, or what you do with that priceless time. John Alston, he once said, the only thing you take with you when you're gone is what you leave behind. He means we should all try and leave this planet a little better than we found it, and be remembered positively by the people we shared it with. Because the truth is, when you're buried six feet deep in a grave somewhere, you're not gonna be buried with your multiple cars or your fancy house, no. What you will have at that moment is the satisfaction of knowing what you're leaving behind. Now, in order to lead a life worth living or to secure a legacy you're proud of, there must be some risks taken. Anybody who's become anybody in this world has taken risks to get there. And not all of them come with an automatic reward, but each does come with a lesson learned. So today, I'm going to pay tribute to a woman who took a huge risk. And as a result, it changed her life, many others' lives, and hopefully even more lives in the future. Betsy Sawyer, or as I know her, Mrs. Sawyer, ever since being in her fifth grade English class. Mrs. Sawyer isn't your typical fifth grade English teacher, although she did give me the secret to getting advanced on my literature MCAS exam, but she's known for much, much more than that. Over 11 years ago, Mrs. Sawyer started an after-school club at Groton Dunstable Regional Middle School in Groton, Massachusetts. There were eight little kids enrolled in that original club. And one day, they were all gathered around, discussing life in general, and they came up with this idea. They wanted to break a world record. Mrs. Sawyer was on board with the idea, and since she was an English teacher, she suggested they make the biggest book in the world. Seems fitting, right? Well, a big book is all fine and good, but what are you going to fill the pages with? This is where it gets interesting. They decided to make the biggest book in the world on peace. Now, the concept of peace can be kind of hard to digest. What does peace look like? When will we ever have peace, if ever? And how do we establish peace? Very deep questions for 10-year-olds to tackle. But they did. So now this story becomes my story when I enter middle school as a fifth grader. The club had already been in existence for about three years before I joined. So immediately, I was swept into a whirlwind of letters being written, letters being sent out, letters being received, organization in general. Us students, we drew pictures, wrote poems, wrote essays. And everything that was submitted expressed how each individual felt about the world, about the issues that were occurring at that time, and where they hoped to see the world in 20 years, and so on and so forth. Our excitement was rising as each letter came in. But if you're going to make such a big book, you have to get a lot of input. So we reached out to our extended families, to surrounding communities, to veterans and politicians, people all over the country, and even famous public figures such as Nelson Mandela, Jimmy Carter, Mother Teresa, Maya Angelou, Senator Ted Kennedy, and the Dalai Lama. We were ecstatic when such poised and powerful people responded to us personally. And to us, age didn't matter. And clearly, they didn't think it did either, because when they did respond, it was always with the utmost respect, and they shared our enthusiasm for the project. Our next step was to involve businesses and donors, because this book did take a lot of funding. We then reached out to engineers from UMass Lowell, who helped us create a mechanical page turner so that our book can be flipped through continuously without stopping and without difficulty. Then we reached out to the company DuPont's Tyvek, 
Now they make this special paper that's often used for the construction of houses and buildings because it's lightweight, strong, air resistant, and water resistant. And we used it because it would be perfect for our book. The company EFI Vutech, a manufacturer of grand format inkjet printers from New Hampshire, gave us some expert advice as well as donate the massive amount of ink needed for printing. As the years went by, our dream of spreading peace began to become a reality. Slowly, pages began filling up with colorful representations of all types of people from all over the country and world. And during these years, I moved to a neighboring town. However, I never lost connection with the club, and I still wholeheartedly believe in their message. I was still involved in the club, and in 2014, our book was completed and showcased for the very first time at the John F. Kennedy Memorial Library, where the Secretary General of the United Nations spoke and congratulated us. It was extremely surreal to see what started off as just an idea blossom into a 12-foot by 10-foot, 1,100-page book that includes 3,500 letters promoting the innate good nature of human beings. And recently, this past March, on the International Day of Happiness, our book was exhibited at the United Nations to begin the kickoff for our world tour. Our next stop is set to be the Republic of Korea this coming year. Our goal of this world tour is to show that one idea and a lot of dedication can really change lives. This project, it took the commitment of hundreds of people. Thus, hundreds of people took this risk this journey with us, and hundreds of people have reaped the reward. You know, a lot of people these days, they tend to think the millennials are selfish or not as caring as past generations. Well, we're here to prove to them that our generation is thinking about peace. We are educated, and we are preparing to be the ones who take over this world someday, and we plan to do it in a peaceful manner. Imagine for a second that Mrs. Sawyer and those fifth graders let their negativity get the best of them. And this amazing project never saw the light of day. For me, personally, I wouldn't have opened my eyes to the world as soon as I did. I wouldn't have taken an interest in similar cultures or really even taken the time to think of what peace actually means. And on a broader scale, if this book has the ability to impact just one other person in a positive way, or show younger people that their dreams for a better world is a real possibility, then our goal has been achieved. Mrs. Sawyer, 11 years ago, took that risk of listening to kids. When time mattered, whether she knew it or not, she spent hers with us, and that has made all the difference. Younger kids, they tend to be a lot more optimistic than adults, and so when you're young, you have these dreams, these aspirations that you hope will come true someday. Well, for us, we got our hopes so high that this book would be a success that in hindsight, if our dream had fallen flat, I truly think all of the students involved, including myself, would have lost a little bit of our spark of motivation and belief in the world. Essentially, we risked our optimism. This project, it took a big chunk of time, and remember, Time is a very overwhelming concept to grasp, and everyone's only here for a certain amount of it. So in those 80 years you're blessed to be on this earth, your legacy forms. How you'll be remembered is stitched into your name. Mrs. Sawyer was able to cultivate a group of young people to think outside of the box, outside of their small hometown about issues that really matter. She taught me that love matters, that perseverance is key, and that no, is not always a good enough answer, all while keeping world peace as her ultimate objective. She wanted this idea to be spread. So today, I'm here sharing her message with you. That peace is a risk. It is a massive risk, but it is a risk worth taking. Moving forward, I hope some of what I share today stays with you as you work to build your own legacy. And I thank you for your time because I know how precious it is. Thank you.